Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for the market recap. And if you're interested in any of the services I provide, please check out the links in the description below for both the Patreon and Discord. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> we're just going to hop right on into the charts. Looking at the Dixie, it's finally starting to make that move up as I have been mapping out. So we've had this nice, slow grind uh, uh, consolidation as we came into this major support zone between 104.88 to 102.710. We now have had a beautiful pop-up on this daily candle, and we're now tapping the top side of this blue zone around 104.88, and we should see continuation in the dollar at least coming towards these bearish fair value gaps here that I have circled. So, so far it's been following our doodle that we've pathed out here, and we may potentially see a continuation move to the upside back towards this blue zone here between 106.56 to 108.09. Now, if we do break up towards these levels or even just reach towards these bearish fair value gaps I have circled here, we should be looking for a continuation lower over a period of time as we come towards this ascending trend line, okay? So this ascending trend line that we have mapped right here is still the ultimate target level for price to get to, and then we'll watch and see how price action starts to behave as we start touching this zone. But in the end, it's very likely we may have a pop up from there, but in the end, it is still likely that we will break lower from there and get back towards 100 to potentially all the way down towards 97 and change. Okay. Now, the dollar, like I've been mentioning, is still bullish on the macro. So if you're looking at the monthly and weekly time frame, even with this drop, it's still bullish. So as we come lower, I'm going to be looking for a major reversal and continuing the new uptrend structure it's built on the monthly time frame okay but downside uh overall is still to be expected but look for this short term up move then leading down towards these lower levels all right let's get down to the dow see what's going on there so dow has been pretty much playing out as expected so far so again i'm keeping the doodles on the chart that way we can kind of see like how our ideas are playing out whether it's right wrong how close we are and so far it's been relatively uh, accurate tapping into this bearish fair value gap multiple times over last week and then today and now we should see in the coming days potential more downside back towards this descending trend line and then these lower bullish fair value gaps which would make sense as I'm seeing more strength in the dollar brewing. So we want to see the Dow inverse to that pulling back. And it should be a bullish pullback because I don't expect the dollar to have a, a massive move up, at least not past 109, 110. That should be around the max zone. If we start breaking past those levels on the dollar, then this retracement down on the Dow may lead to a much larger move down and potentially even attacking these lows down here. So it's paramount if we're going to have any continued upside early in this year for January of 2023, we want to see these levels hold uh, and specifically this pivot level here at 29,595.3 to hold generally. And that is the high pivot prior to the covid lockdown drop okay so you want to hold that and then hold these lows and that should that should insinuate that we will have more upside uh you know early this year all right next is smp so smp similar to the dow having a consolidation here kind of like we have doodled right here we should see that continuation to break lower as the dollar uh, starts gaining more strength in the short term, taking out the liquidity under this slow pivot and then finding a potential higher low base from this low down here and then looking for continuation to ultimately break past this uh, pivot up here, this pivot up here and grab the liquidity above this swing high pivot over here. Okay, so so far, so good on the mapping out. Nasdaq. So Nasdaq broke back into the into the descending channel as expected. Has this bearish fair value gap that we will eventually likely see tested. But as you can see, as price broke back down, we actually had a nice little rally up early in the day. Tapped at the resistance level at 11,071. Failed off of that as well as the top side 
of the descending uh, uh, channel. And now we may see that continuation lower. And like I've been warning, you know, watch for the NASDAQ to take out these lows, uh, unlike the S&P and the Dow, because the NASDAQ has really a lot more room to the downside to come back towards its 2020 lockdown uh, high. Right. So the, before the pivot, before the lockdowns, the, 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 the COVID lockdowns, 9,756 was the pivot high. So I'm looking for the NASDAQ to break down towards this level at some point. So if the NASDAQ were to break towards these levels, we will likely be seeing the Dow and the S&P making that higher low structure. Um, so, you know, it's OK if the NASDAQ takes out its lows because it's been lacking uh, percentage wise to the downside it's been really underperforming the selling okay it has not been following the the dow and the s p uh as closely as it should so this will be uh likely the time where it starts catching up in my opinion all right next is oil oil having a nice sell off today uh not surprising as the dollar strengthens but in my opinion oil still bullish bouncing off this major monthly level here this descending trend line look for it to come back down and likely make a higher low structure now it could potentially come lower and come back down towards this descending trend line trading down to it because as i've said in the past as well you know the main levels to watch out for are 85 75 and then 60 bucks now these are bullish levels to watch for oil to get to and then have a massive continuation higher okay so we may be making our way back down you know trailing this monthly uh, structure the low side of it coming down towards 60 but nothing has changed on the macro for oil it is it's still extremely likely that we will see a spike in demand and the oil prices will fly now what's most probable here is that we do break down and then we hold a higher low structure here from this low here okay that is that is what i'm seeing potentially forming here just to try and get enough fuel to challenge the higher fair value gaps over here now this one we can take away this bears fair value gap because it's been filled now we're going to be looking for this one and this one to eventually be challenged okay so next is gold and silver so gold and silver gold is i mean it's been very impressive watching it's still in the rising wedge structure came back up towards the top of it and it's been testing it out we'll see if we can get that impulse to break up higher now the probabilities are still to the downside but uh you can't deny what you're seeing here this is a very very powerful looking out of gold we if it does break this this uh, rising wedge structure then or you know then look for a, a pretty hard pop going past this consolidation so past 1880 grabbing all the liquidity above this level and potentially if it has a really really strong impulse then look for this fair value gap up here towards 1900 plus to get tested but in my opinion you'll look for a pull a breakdown so wait for this breakdown if we should break down this level look for at least the high side of this fair value gap to get tested and if we should break up then look for in the short term this consolidation to get taken out Either way, whether it breaks down or up, gold is bullish. A breakdown just means it looks like it's likely going to make a higher low from this low here, potentially even make an inverse hand shoulder structure, though now that structure looks very unlikely considering how much we've risen here. So the neckline that would have been right around here is no longer uh, you know, uh, uh, viable. So if we do break down, just look for a higher low structure and then potentially continuation to the upside. All right, next is silver silver came into these fair value gaps with uh all the way through so it's grabbed all the liquidity within this level here now it hasn't officially closed through them so it's still they're still fairly viable but a lot of the liquidity that was resting there has been taken out so if we are going to pull back uh, this will be it we do have another fair value gap right here that we can look to potentially see getting tested so another bearish fair value gap right above the high wick we made on this daily candle here so watch for us to start testing into this level if we get continued strength. But you know, judging the candle here, this is a tough, tough candle to hold bullish considering how much it's sold off. Now it's not impossible, of course. The probabilities are still too downside to, to getting towards these fair value gaps right here. And then this higher one here also testing the top side of this structure here. So I am looking for that pullback just like I am on gold, but if gold does spike through its rising wedge structure, then watch your silver to do the same, spiking all the way through. 
And considering how it's been looking, I wouldn't be shocked if we take out this high here and start tapping into, to, into 26 and change. All right, now let's take a look at Bitcoin, see how that has been playing out today. So Bitcoin has been uh, probably fairly, fairly sideways. Yeah, so, you know, it's been it's been relatively the same uh, over these last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, it, it has really not been showing much uh, impulse in either direction. Now, we are in the middle of this larger descending wedge structure. Now, we'll see how over the coming days and weeks if Bitcoin's going to find the impulse to get test the top side of this structure, which is around 18,000, 18,200, or if we're going to break back down towards this bullish fair value gap and try to hold this structure. Okay. Either way, uh, Bitcoin is in a pretty precarious situation. Now, if anything huge fundamentally happens, let's just say like Binance goes down or something huge in regards to regulations happens, uh, this can really break the structure we're seeing here, bullish or bearish, depending on what is uh, announced. But just looking at it from a price action standpoint, we're in a range, and my advice would be just to stay on the sidelines. But I would have somewhat of a bullish bias in the longer term here. Now, we could pull back down all the way down towards 14,000 and change, but I would be looking for a potential break up because the sending wedges do have a bullish bias to them. Now, this break up will lead to, in my opinion, a really nice rally should it actually validate, but remember it's just a, a rally a bear market rally okay it, it's not going to it's very unlikely to lead to new all-time highs it's more likely just to grab the imbalances that we have here so you have the imbalance here and potentially if we have a really really big rally all the way up here so there's a lot of liquidity within these imbalances here that i would look for bitcoin to look to target okay if we should break this wedge now if we were to break this wedge bullish what would be the you know measured move so we'll go from the high down to the low let's see what the measured move would be and we'll see if it coincides with any levels uh you know that that potentially are formed here so let's say it breaks up from around here so around this high here so within a couple weeks uh we'll say it broke through around here uh you're looking at it filling or tapping into this uh fair value gap right here so we do have this imbalance that we made here being the level that we would want to see, uh, you know, being tested and same right here. Okay. So we would look to fill this larger fair value gap bears fair value gap here and potentially start tapping into this larger one up here. Okay. So there is some upside targets for Bitcoin. If it should break this wedge, here's our measured move area. And even if we were to stall and come all the way down towards here, we're looking at this larger fair value gap being the ultimate measured move uh, for Bitcoin to reach, which is anywhere from, you know, depending on how long it takes, should we break to the upside, it could be anywhere from about 23,000 to as high as about 26,000, 27,000 almost. Okay. So I am looking for bull Bitcoin to be somewhat bullish, uh, but uh, we will have to continuously wait and see how this range within this larger descending wedge structure plays out. And if we were to break down, I mean, then we're looking at the 12s and 10K uh, level. So we do have this here and take a look at this if the full measured move were to happen to the downside depending on where it happened uh, you're looking for a move down towards about 7,000 to 6,500 now I'm not calling for that to happen but if it were to break down that would be the general zone that we would be looking for okay so it's very important at least for the bulls if they want to try and get a, a nice bear market rally that they break this structure bullish if it doesn't that look for some serious selling going down sub 10,000. Okay. All right, everyone, that is it. That is it for this market recap. Remember, if you have any questions, ask me on the Discord or leave a comment. Uh, if you enjoy the content, make sure to give me a like, a share, a subscribe. I really appreciate all that. And if you're interested in any of those services, like I mentioned, whether it's the tutoring service, the swing trade service, or the day trading room service, make sure to check out that Patreon link. You can get all the details through there. And also check out the video I just posted. I'll leave the link to it uh, in the description. It's the uh, report card for the Lemon Garden, pretty much for Q4 of 2022, and also just going over the year performance. We absolutely killed it, 1,400 plus percent in stock profit swing trades, and then also 700 plus percent in swing trades for crypto. So if you're interested in uh, you know kind of participating in that, make sure to check out the swing trade service. It's only $15 a month. All right, everyone, remember: be patient, be vigilant and be nimble. I love you guys. Take care.